Following the amazing success of the all-new Anglia, the biggest selling car ever produced in this country, the logical step to further forward penetration into the total car sales market is the introduction of yet another outstanding model to the four to five seater class, a class which has only been lightly touched by the smaller Anglia and the larger console Mark II. From now on, the medium car market is expected to expand considerably with increased sales of the four to five seater models, although the figures are not expected to equal those of the small car. At present, the medium car enjoys 33% of the total car sales, and of this figure, 80% is accounted for by the four to five seater models such as the Victor and Minx. It is this large part of the medium market that Ford now enters with an outstanding car that has a list of exclusive features that must give it immediate leadership. Immediate leadership with sealed beam dual headlamps, disc brakes, much more luggage space, lower overall height, reverse incline rear window, machine cylinder heads, hollow crankshaft, etc. The new Consul Classic 315, Ford Motor Company's outstanding achievement in the medium car class. New 1965 styling in 1961, presented in two breathtaking models. The two-door... The four-door... In both can be found performance and handling qualities hitherto associated only with sporting and specialist productions. Luxurious comfort, bringing unmatched motoring ease to passengers and drivers alike. Powerful disc brakes, light, precise steering, superb road holding, responsive engine, smooth and lightning swift gear change, incredible visibility and safety interior furnishings providing built-in safety. From the front, one can appreciate fully the low falling bonnet line of these exciting new cars, which ensures exceptional visibility in addition to an unusually low drag factor. The low-set handsome grille accentuates the road-clinging frontal appearance, whilst the wide spread of its lower half emphasizes the width of the car. On the standard models, there is no molding below the bumper, and the upper half has the aperture filled by the model name, instead of the five four-point stars shown here on the Deluxe. The appearance of width is still further increased by the dual headlamps and the mounting of the parking and flasher indicator lights at the extremities of the wings. The dual five and three quarter inches diameter headlamps provide magnificent driving light for all speeds and traffic conditions. The outer pair having a dip filament of 50 watts on the focal point and the main beam filaments of 37.5 watts off the focal point to give a spread beam whilst the inner pair have single filaments of 37.5 watts each at focal point to give a long beam. The headlamps embody sealed beam units in which the reflectors do not deteriorate and main beam comprises all four main beams. Whilst the dip is the dip beam of the outer pair of headlamps. The headlamps are deeply recessed to prevent upward glare and this also adds forward reaching length to the front wings to give further emphasis to the long road-hugging silhouette. The front wing assemblies are bolted to the body structure for ease of assembly and repair. The elegant styling and clean lines with the minimum of ornamentation of these sensational new cars is clearly portrayed in this side view which discloses the outstandingly successful reversed incline rear window introduced by Ford in the now fabulous new Anglia. The bright metal strip on the rocker panel is not fitted to standard models. But the drip rail capping is common to all models. Length, low, sleek, graceful length is the dominant impression. 
for it is 14 feet 2 and 3 quarter inches in length and only 4 feet 6 and a half inches high, 3 and a half inches lower than its nearest competitor. Exceptional length of roof line ensures ample leg room and unusually full headroom for the rear passengers. For the reverse incline rear window is not merely a styling feature, it has practical and functional advantages. In addition to full length leg room and exceptional headroom, it provides outstandingly good rearward visibility through an effective glass area of 533 square inches, together with clarity in wet weather and protection from hot sunlight for the back passengers. And it permits a very long deck lid for the luggage compartment which provides effective accommodation far in excess of any competitor, being no less than 21 cubic feet. The deck lid is a double-skinned panel with helical counterbalance springs and push-button release. The reverse incline window and the long deck lid lend an impressive and graceful appearance to the rear of the car. This graceful appearance being accentuated by the flare of the rear wings over the bold and distinctive rear lamp, stoplight and direction indicator assemblies. On the Deluxe models, the lower back panel has a textured metal insert pleek surrounded by a bright metal beading with the name Classic in script on the right. The petrol tank is located beneath the luggage compartment floor with the filler concealed behind the rear number plate. It has a capacity of nine gallons. There is a tremendous eye appeal in every angle of these new models. And here again you see the four-door Deluxe from a position which shows to advantage the graceful curve of the roof line and the full depth curved windscreen with ultra-thin pillars and bright metal capping to match the molding you've seen across the rear edge of the roof. The effective area of the windscreen is no less than 959 square inches. The twin wiper blades in bright metal sweep the maximum possible area and leave no dangerous blind spots. They are operated by a variable speed electric motor. Below the screen lies the intake for the exceptionally efficient fresh air ventilation equipment. With the heater fitted as an option, ventilation by cold or hot air is extremely comprehensive and fully controllable. With this equipment, one can select cold air for the screen with hot air for the interior, or conversely, hot air for the screen and cold air to the interior with a wide range of variations between to suit every condition. Now, to open the door of this four-door Deluxe model for a careful examination of the luxurious interior of this truly outstanding car. Easy entry and exit is made possible by the width of the doors, which are held open by a newly designed check device. The front door opening on the four-door models is 33 and a half inches wide, and the rear door opening is 30 and three-quarter inches wide, and on the two-door models, the front door opening is no less than 40 inches. On all models, both doors are fitted with key-operated private locks, and the handles are of the push-button type. The windows wind down flush, and the quarter vents have positive locking catches. On the Deluxe models, the vents are bright metal. On Deluxe models, window frames are embellished by rolled section chrome mouldings. Two-tone door trim with mylar strip dividing the coloured sections and PVC covered armrests incorporating door release catches are features of the Deluxe models. The additional equipment of the Deluxe saloons also includes two chrome plated coat hooks. The seating is superbly comfortable, the front seats being of the split bench type, with a five inch adjustment on both halves. The rear seat of the saloons has an extended squab which covers the wheel arch intrusion. On the standard models, a two-tone trim gives a darker colour on the seat faces and the back of the front seat only. But on a Deluxe shown here, there is a two-tone scheme in normal and metallic PVC with the option of saran weave fabric or, at extra cost, hide. The extra width of the doors in the two-door models ensures very easy access to the rear seats, particularly as both halves of the front seat can be tilted forward. 
In the rear, the outstanding advantages of the reverse incline rear window are particularly apparent. Full headroom and legroom being provided to a noticeable degree, despite the very low overall height of the car. The effective headroom being 37 inches and the effective legroom approximately 40 inches, with the front seat one inch from its rearmost position. In the front, the dimensions are equally impressive. The effective legroom being just over 46 inches and the effective headroom 37 inches. With hip room of 52 and a half inches in the front and 52 and 3 8 inches in the rear, there is no possibility of even the largest passengers being cramped for space. The rear quarter windows are of the horizontal swing opening type with a front hinge controlled by an over center catch. On the two door models, each window has an area of 256 square inches. And on the four door models, the area of each window is 45 square inches, the quarter windows being in the rear doors in addition to the drop windows. From the driving seat, you will quickly appreciate the meticulous attention given to the driving position and ease of control. You will notice first the comfortable position of the steering wheel. It is 16 inches in diameter and of a dished two-spoke design to allow an uninterrupted view of the instruments. The full horn ring is provided on the Deluxe models, whereas standard models are equipped with a horn button. Beneath the wheel on the right, a bright metal antenna controls the trafficators. On the Deluxe models, the button at the end of the antenna provides flasher control of the headlamps. On the left-hand side of the steering column is the gear change lever, when it is fitted in this position to the Deluxe models as an option. The handbrake lever in all models is of the pistol grip type, in black finish mounted next to the steering column. Immediately in front of the driver is a handsome recessed rectangular panel containing the speedometer with mileage recorder reading to one-tenth of a mile. Included in the face of the speedometer are the green oil and blue main beam warning lights and the orange trafficator warning arrows. Flanking the speedometer are the temperature gauge on the left and the fuel gauge on the right. On standard models, the bezels of all instruments are in grey plastic instead of the chrome which is deluxe equipment and the garnish moulding panels are in satin finish metal instead of bright metal. In the panel to the right of the fuel gauge is the combined windscreen wiper control and windscreen washer plunger of the deluxe models. Below this panel on all models are located the combined ignition starter switch and the light switch, which incorporates a rear stat and an interior light cutout position. And between these is the red ignition warning light. On the left of the center panel is the choke on all models. And on the right, there is on the deluxe models, a cigar lighter. On standard models, this position is occupied by the windscreen wiper control. Between is the heater control panel and immediately below is the ashtray. On the far left is the glove box with a lockable lid. Above is a deep full width crash pad covered with PVC with the radio speaker grill set in the center of the upper face immediately behind the windscreen. On the standard models, the PVC is gray, but on deluxe models, it is matched to suit the trim. Underneath the lower roll of the belt rail finish panel is a full width parcel tray. The main driving controls have been carefully positioned for ease and comfort, the clutch and brake pedals being of the pendant type to exclude the entry of drafts and dust, whilst the excellent leverage and hydraulic action of both ensures extremely light operation. The accelerator is of the organ type. The dip switch is conveniently positioned to the left of the clutch pedal. On the standard models, the four-speed gearbox has a short floor-mounted lever which provides precise and easy operation. It is finished in black. On the deluxe models, when a floor change is specified, the lever is chrome-plated with a black knob. Deluxe models are equipped with a second sun visor. The interior mirror has a chrome back and stem, and the interior light in the base of the mirror stem has courtesy switch control fitted to both front doors. In the Deluxe models, there is also an ashtray fitted in the back of the right-hand front seat for the convenience of rear passengers. 
In the Deluxe models, the floor covering is coloured carpet to suit the trim scheme, whilst in standard models, it is coloured rubber PVC laminate. The hinged forward bonnet, supported by a spring-loaded centre stay, provides ready access to the engine compartment, together with maximum safety. It is secured by spring-loaded catches at the rear, controlled by a lever underneath the parcel tray. Well, there it is. The overhead valve engine embodying the many advanced features already proven in the now-famous 105 engine, the favourite with racing and competition drivers as well as ordinary private motorists. It is designed to provide competitive performance, high cruising speed and economy, together with outstanding quiet and smooth operation. A bore of 80.96 millimetres and a stroke of 65.07 millimetres gives a capacity of 1340 cc's and with a compression ratio of 8.5 to 1, this remarkable power unit develops no less than 56.5 brake horsepower gross at 5,000 RPM and a torque of 78 pounds feet gross at 2,500 RPM. A compression ratio of 7.2 to 1 is available to permit operation on standard fuel. This new engine is extremely compact and rigid and you will notice the cylinder block and crankcase are cast in one piece giving ample support to the housings of the three extra-large steel-backed replaceable main bearings, which carry the crankshaft of very advanced hollow construction with overlapping big end and main bearing journals, thus combining great strength and rigidity with low weight. Because of the extremely short stroke and their I-beam section, the connecting rods of forged steel are unusually stiff. The big end bearings are steel-backed, copper-lead-lined, replaceable shells, and the small end bearings are steel-backed, bronze-lined bushes. The piston pins are hollow and fully floating in the rods and pistons, which are light alloy with autothermically controlled solid skirts and provided with three rings, two compression, the top one chrome-plated, and one oil control ring of the slotted channel type, all rings being located above the piston pin. The camshaft for the overhead valves is of nickel chrome alloy cast iron and it is carried in three steel backed white metal lined bearings. It is pressure lubricated and it is driven by chain which is lubricated by direct spray and equipped with a tensioner. The overhead valves are actuated by mushroom shaped cam followers, solid push rods and rockers. The clearance adjustment is by screw and lock nut in the rocker arms. A feature of this design is the total enclosure of the push rods in the block so that there is no push rod side cover. A source of oil leaks is thus eliminated and the cylinder block is more rigid. The valves are large to give good breathing and there are separate ports for each inlet and exhaust valve. This feature combined with fully machined combustion chambers, a refinement generally only found in aero engines, ensures more equal combustion to give smoother running and consequently less wear arising from unbalanced forces. Cooling is by a pressurized system with an 11 inches diameter two-bladed fan mounted on the spindle of the centrifugal type water pump shown here. So that the correct working temperature may be attained quickly and maintained, the water circulation is controlled by a thermostat. Lubrication is by full pressure to mains, connecting rod, camshaft and rocker bearings via oilways formed integrally in the cylinder block, cylinder head, crankshaft and rocker arm spindle. The oil pump is mounted externally in an horizontal position on the off side of the cylinder block where the airstream helps to keep it cool. Cleanliness of the engine is maintained by the full flow type filter which is mounted on the oil pump. To remove vapours which have a corrosive effect on the engine parts and also contribute to the formation of oil sludge, filtered crankshaft ventilation is employed, the detrimental fumes being extracted through a pipe leading to the airstream under the car. Balanced carburation under all operating conditions is provided by a single downdraft carburetor through a scientifically designed four-branch manifold with a conduction-type hotspot and the qualities of exceptional power 
economy and smoothness offered by the large overhead valves, individual valve ports and machined cylinder heads are thus assured. The air cleaner is of the dry gauze type. Fuel is supplied by a mechanical diaphragm type pump driven off the camshaft. Ignition is by distributor with spark advance controlled by combined centrifugal and vacuum systems, which is located on the off side of the block and gear driven from the camshaft. High voltage for maximum spark intensity is provided by a 12 volt oil filled coil. The generator is a belt driven shunt wound ventilated type with the output governed by a new self-contained three bobbin type regulator and cutout unit, which ensures maximum battery life. The battery, which is 12 volts, 38 ampere hour at 20 hour rate, is accessibly located under the bonnet on the right hand side. Transmission is through a single dry plate clutch of seven and a quarter inches diameter with hydraulic operation to a four speed gearbox of the type already made famous by the new Anglia with fully synchronized action on second, third and top gears so that it is impossible to crash the gears. This new gearbox, with its short, stiff floor lever or column change already described, provides close ratios for maximum performance and economy. The overall ratios, with the rear axle ratio of 4.125 to 1 being first gear 16.987, Second gear, 9.884. Third gear, 5.826. Top gear, 4.125. Reverse, 22.292 to 1. Final drive is by open tubular shaft with front and rear needle roller bearing universal joints to a semi-floating rear axle with hypoid crown wheel and pinion in a pressed steel banjo type housing. Outstanding riding comfort and confidence-inspiring stability is assured for these new models by the conspicuously successful independent front suspension, which is a unique Ford feature, and outstanding in its simplicity, efficiency, and low maintenance costs. In the rear, lever-type double-acting hydraulic shock absorbers control long, underslung, longitudinal, and asymmetrical semi-elliptic leaf springs with zinc interleaf liners. The steering is extremely light and precise, being of the high efficiency, low friction, recirculatory ball type, offering a very high resistance to wear in addition to fine handling qualities. The turning circle is only 33 feet 8 inches, a great advantage in traffic driving, parking or in negotiating abrupt turns. The brakes are an impressive feature of these advanced cars, being of the latest disc type in the front and having large diameter drums in the rear to provide immensely powerful, safe braking. They are hydraulically operated to ensure smooth and balanced action together with light pedal pressure. These brakes are unquestionably far in advance of competition. The front discs are no less than nine and a half inches in diameter with one twin hydraulic cylinder, caliper operating the molded pads on each disc. The pad area is 17.94 square inches. In the rear, the 9 inches diameter drums provide lining area of 57.6 square inches and the brakes operate on the principle of one leading and one trailing shoe with one double piston type hydraulic cylinder in order to provide the ideal distribution of braking effort. The steel disc type wheels have large ventilation slots to assist cooling of the brake drums and the impressive single curvature bright metal hubcaps enhance the general appearance of the car. The 560 by 13 tyres mounted on wide base rims give a great area of adhesion, good heat dissipation and long life. Tubeless tyres are standard equipment but tubed tyres are optional, whilst the 590 by 13 white wall and 6 ply tyres are optional at extra cost. For easy wheel changing, a four-point jacking system is provided. Now, once more, take a long look at the long, low look. The new Console Classic 315 Style Setter Pacemaker
for no other car in its class gives all these features just described to you. This is the car for the motorist who can appreciate practical advantages in design and style. The car with new grace, the longest, lowest car in its class, with sophisticated elegance and dramatic appearance. The car that looks right in any scene. The car for performance. The car for comfort. The car for fun. The car which must command immediate leadership in the four to five seater market. The console classic 315.